there are actually a lot less people saved than you might think. A lot less people saved. And, and it took, for many years, I didn't know the difference. I didn't see that. I didn't think there was much of a difference. I, you know, it was just kind of like, yeah, sure, whatever. But hey, at least you're following Christ, right? At least you, at least you believe, and all these people say they believe in Jesus. But understanding what it is that makes someone saved and unsaved, and really, you know, obviously I knew I was saved because I put my trust in Jesus. And I just assumed that everyone else was also putting all of their trust in Jesus as their Savior. But of course, that's without talking to them, without going into detail, without anything else. And let's face it. Most people, I would say at least most people like me, who didn't get plugged into a good church, who was saved, why are you really going to go that far into what someone believes more than just like, well, hey, are you a Christian? Oh, cool, well, I'm a Christian too. Right? And that's, for many people, that's good enough. And you feel comfortable and you feel satisfied with that answer. But I'll tell you what, if you care about their soul and if you actually Understand that just because someone might give you that answer, it doesn't mean that they are saved. And we, we need to take that to heart. And we started off here in Matthew chapter 7. And, and interestingly enough, this is one of the passages that people who believe you have to do works to be saved will turn to. And I love it when I'm talking to someone about this and trying to preach the gospel to them. And they say, yeah, well, turn to Matthew chapter 7. I'll gladly turn to Matthew chapter 7. Because it doesn't teach what you think it teaches. And people who want to tell you that, like, no, faith isn't enough. No, you've got to, you've got to do works. You've got to do something else. You've got to be baptized. You know, anything, anything they tell you, no, there's more to it than just that. They love to turn to this passage. Look at verse number 21 in Matthew 7. The Bible says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. And, and this is where I'm, you know, kind of getting my title. Hey, there's unsaved Christians. There are people out there that are going to say, Lord, Lord. And they're going to be calling on the right Lord in that sense. Say, you know, like, hey, God, God of the Bible, Jehovah, right? Or Jesus. They're going to be calling out, Lord, Lord. Many will say, Lord, Lord. But not everyone is going to be admitted. So there's going to be a lot of people that call themselves Christians, a lot of people who are looking to the Lord that are not saved. It's not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, now look at here's what they say. These are the ones saying, Lord, 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 have we not prophesied in thy name? Hey, haven't we been preaching in your name? I mean, I've been dedicating, I've been serving you, God, by prophesying in your name, in the name of Jesus. And how many people are claiming the name of Jesus today? A ton of people are. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And in the context here, this is talking about entering into the kingdom of heaven, being saved. And this, is, this lines up perfectly with the analogy that I like to give people, or not the analogy, but the situation that I like to give people, which tests what is in your heart to be saved. And the, the, what I often do, and those of you who go out soloing with me know I, I use this frequently, if I were to drop dead today, right, just, if I just, just had a heart attack and I died, and I met face to face with God, and God said, hey, why should I let you into heaven? Or here, why, why should you enter the kingdom of heaven? Whatever my response is, is where my faith is. Why should I let you in? Why should you get to come into heaven? Well, Lord, Lord, hey, haven't I prophesied in your name? Lord, I was a pastor of a Baptist church. I preach Jesus every week. I tried to help people. Haven't I? Well, I don't know if I've, I've never really cast out a devil. Okay, but <coughs> this is what some people are saying. Hey, haven't we cast out devils? 
and in thy name done many wonderful works. Okay, that's a pretty broad statement. Haven't, we done a, haven't I done a bunch of works for you, God? Now, if I'm, if I'm saying these things to God as to why he should let me enter into heaven, where is my faith? It's right here. It's on me. I did this, but haven't I done that? Haven't I done this? Lord, haven't I done these works? Verse 23, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. But look, I did all this stuff for you. I never even knew you. That's what he's saying. He's saying, depart from me. 